Welcome back to a DIY solar update. This is a video about my idea to go all electric in my home. So this is a 2020's all electric house. I'm going to talk about hot water, my furnace, and also grilling. Most of the other electrification problems are already solved. Over the winter I was able to use significantly less natural gas thanks to my 19 sear 12,000 BTU mini split heat pump system. Even with a gas rate of 33 and a half cents per 100 cubic feet, I still ended up saving some money. There's no excuse in my opinion for getting less uh, than a 19 sear heat pump. The Dazuki heat pump ended up costing $1,300 installed in the app. Wi-Fi app works pretty good and the heat is really aggressive on the second floor where the bedrooms are. Uh, and then also the natural gas furnace circulator fan uh, seen in a previous video uh, distributes the heat very nicely around the house. So the next large undertaking that I want to take on is going on all electric. This means figuring out the three main trouble points that I hope to outline in three future hit videos. The first is hot water and it's really the hardest one to do and so I'm tackling it first. And it's because energy needs so water needs so much energy to heat up. I'm going to do this with another heat pump system and also an instant hot water heater to boost it. Next is the furnace, which is really just removing the natural gas unit and installing a Mr. Cool 3 ton with a electric strip heater in it. Lastly, the grill. <clears throat> There's a lot of pride in having a sweet grilling setup, so my plans include not giving up any grill master credit, but instead use to take grilling to the next level by converting my Weber Genesis into a multi-mode convection and radiant electric cooking masterpiece. Uh, all these items have the theme of using a lot of 240 volt power. So I called Power Home Solar uh, and they had a rep come out to my house and they wanted to put 17 panels on my house at a cost of $43,000. And of course that's without the, uh, that's before the credits and the rebates and the we pay one year uh, uh, games. Uh, so they call me back and then they say, oh, something changed and now it's an 18 panel system and the price is $47,000 and they would not honor the previous price quote that I had gotten. Uh, and the thing is, is at that price point, uh, it's basically never going to pay off uh, because of the interest that they charge on that to finance it. Um, and it would make me poor. I would have less money at the end of the 25 years than if I were to just not do it. Uh, even accounting for inflation and all that. So instead, I'm going to dabble in zero export grid assist, which is the subject of this video. I think that many people find my information useful since the technology I've assembled is not limited to folks like me. A renter or even a hobbyist could do what I'm talking about here. To start, I wanted to research zero export systems that are ready made. There are some really nice and expensive units from Tesla, SolarArk, Outback, Schneider, Engage, and so on. Um, but these options really have a commitment both in cost and also like locking into an ecosystem. So I wanted to figure out a way I could start small and then work up to what I need. Uh, then I found so-called grid tie limiter units on Amazon, eBay, and these guys work, but they're $450 each. Uh, so if you look at how much power you get versus how much it costs, those are like four and a half watts per dollar. So I looked at the infamous gray grid tie inverter box but that doesn't have a limiter. Uh, there's only one version of it that has the 60 volt direct current input, which will work with my battery. And uh, they cost $72 each, which is like $10, uh, I'm sorry, 10 watts per dollar, which is a much better deal. The, but this left me in a position where I had to find a way to limit the inverter when I wasn't using one of these uh, aforementioned large 240 volt appliances. So I discovered a cheap way to do this, and I'm gonna share it with you. I bought two Johnson Controls current relays on eBay for $15 each. These little guys are used in industry to protect equipment from shutdowns and they're rugged. How they work is that if the current going through the sensor goes to zero, then it opens a relay contact. But if there's current flowing, it closes the contact. So I put them on my mains and I wire up the relay output so they're in series. So only when both legs see current do the contact close. Next, I use the voltage controlled dry contact relay in my Magnum RTR router to go in series with the two current relays. So all of them have to be closed for uh, voltage to flow through those wires. This allows me to prevent the grid tie from activating when the battery's low 
and when I'm not using any electricity. Lastly, I needed to add some delay to the response so it doesn't oscillate too fast, so I added an Omron H3Y 12 volt relay to, dis to delay the response up to 60 seconds. I also plan to have maybe up to eight of these little gray box deals, which would be like 4,800 watts power total. Uh, so I wired it up with a, uh, a supplemental relay since the Omron is only rated to switch 5 amps. Uh, I'm going to track performance, and if it's working well, I can add more units, uh, two at a time. Uh, here is like the first layout uh, with two of the 600 watt GTIs. Uh, on the AC side, there's fuses, the uh, relay, and then also an EMI noise filter. Uh, the output side of that noise filter goes to the mains. Um, here we see the installed layout with the relay, the fuses, and the AC side wires that came with them were shortened uh, to fit as cleanly as I could get them. Uh, I used a 120 uh, VAC uh, coil relay, but any handy relay can be used if it's appropriately powered. Here I'm using a 12 volt DC uh, plug to activate the Omron, and then the Omron switches 124 volts on its normally open contact to drive the 240 volt relay. Uh, yeah, this terminal strip is used to connect the 12 VDC signal supplied from that wall plug to the positive uh, terminal of the Omron H3Y directly, then the negative is connected to the Johnson control relays in series, and then in series again to the Magnum RTR voltage controlled relay which is then connected to the negative side of the Omron. So if all three of those relays uh, close, then the timer starts on that Omron H3Y. So on the DC side wiring, uh, the inverters are connected with 10 building gauge wire. Um, I connected the wires uh, to a fuse power panel that I had installed previously, and each positive connects to a fuse terminal, and each ground connects to a strip along the top. Then uh, for uh, wire gauge uh, cables run up to the magnum inverter lugs, which is like the common connection point for all the DC side components in my system. Uh, the battery, the uh, big MPP charger, and also a super capacitor bank. Uh, so here it is all done. When I activate the inverter by bypassing all the limit relays, uh, then the inverters turn on. And it, uh, it looks like these only work for 120 volts, even though they had markings for 240. So after I took this video, I rewired them so there was a neutral wire. Uh, like seen in the one-line diagram previously, and it works great. The Omron is set to about a 20-second delay in this video, and uh, I've got an energy meter coming. And once that's installed, I can report back with how much energy they actually put in uh, to the house. I think once everything's electric, it's going to be about uh, maybe three kilowatt hours. I don't know. Uh, well, anyway, thanks for watching, and stay tuned.